This is Big Falls on the Humber River in Newfoundland. We're just a little late in the season to watch the salmon jumping. Still waiting for bike parts, so it's uh, sandals, shorts, and even misplaced my blue container. But it's time for a water pickup, and we're going camping. The view certainly would look better from the bike, but it looks like it's another week before I'm going to have parts come in and then knowing me it's going to take about two days to get those on so soon oh soon all right leaving Deer Lake and although I've done this route many many times we're going somewhere I haven't uh, gone in a bit and I just realized I may not have turned the can darn extra camera on. Ah. Well, we're going to have to do that. Right. You are at the speed. The speed limit is 50 kilometers per hour. Thank you, dear. Right. Tort Street, Anthony. Okay, so the uh, yeah I did I I did forget to turn the camera on on the trailer, so it's now on. Uh, so I'm heading towards Gross Morn, but we're not going to Gross Morn. We're go we're going to a campground that probably most motorcyclists won't go to, and that is Sir Richard Squire's Mem Memorial Provincial Park. Uh, it's uh, I haven't been there in a long time. Actually, the last time I was there was probably about 20, 2008, maybe 2009, and uh, I did take the bike. Uh, I'd forgotten that the last 30 kilometers in is, uh, is dirt. So we're trying something new today. I have got my uh, camera on on the trailer uh, hooked up to power so uh, it's gonna run it just it's gonna continually run no matter how long I'm riding uh, the card will hold five hours that's a 32 gig card if I had a 64 gig card in it it could run 10 hours basically all day so I think I'll start switching out any camera I put on permanent power. I'll switch it out for uh, uh, for a 64. And uh, yeah, basically when I start riding in the morning till I finish at night, it's going to record the whole time. Now that's that's a lot of footage though. But I figured it would be a, a smart idea to, to do this first in the car anyway. Uh, the bike is is still laid up. I've got some of the parts in, but uh, the main part I need uh, doesn't even look like it's going to ship until the, until Monday. Uh, now I've been promised that that will be air freighted, uh, so it means it won't get lost in the app. And for anyone in the in the Atlantic provinces. Uh, we know what happens to things that go to DM. They don't seem to ever come out. Take the next right onto Highway 422. 
So the GPS is telling me it's about 23 kilometers down Highway 422 uh, through Cormac to the Provincial Park. Uh, the road's okay for most of that, not bad at all. A lot of farmland on either side. And also things like Crooked Feeder Brewery. And I'm becoming a fan of their product. The road does turn into about 13 kilometers of well-maintained dirt road. And after crossing over the uh, Humber River, we're pretty well in the park itself. And actually, you seem to have a, uh, a chip seal or some sort of almost pavement for most of the way from the bridge into the entrance to the park. The park is really, really busy for only about three or four weeks during the summer at the peak of salmon fishing season, end of June, 1st of July. This time of year, not a lot of campers, 159 campsites, and uh, I take a look around and end up deciding on Site 109. Now, just for reference, the only things I've got in the car are what I would normally carry on the bike, i.e. my personal clothes and some of the camera equipment. Other than that, everything is in the Minimate as I normally would be traveling. One oh nine is a good sized site. That's a pull through site makes it really easy for me and the trailer but big enough for oh I could have put another trailer in here another tent no problem at all relatively private backs on the uh, river and the falls were a constant white noise in the background but yeah no quite pleased with the site but then again a lot of the sites in this campground seem to be really good looking I love the fact that most of the provincial campgrounds, they'll deliver your wood right to you. Now note, uh, bundles of firewood are usually cash because they are coming from an outside supplier and not actually the province. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. I think I'm going to have a fine weekend. Prices for wood vary a little bit park to park. Now in this park, the bundle was $8, but it was large enough that I had a good fire this night and the second night, and I still left a, a number of sticks for the, the next set of campers. Okay, we're going to take our time on this setup. Going to have to change batteries soon, too. Uh, I don't like how I've got this thing closed, so... Sometime in the next few weeks, we're going to change that. I'd also like to get some lights up higher. Uh, I was using the USB port here to power the camera. Of course, that's my power in from the solar panel. And uh, hopefully uh, you can make out that uh, my bubbles are centered uh, both back and forth and side to side, which is a good thing. We like that. The shadows are getting longer, and this lets me know also where the sun is setting in the west. The solar panels pointed to that, catch the last bit of sun, but it means at the end of the day, in the, this evening, I'll turn the solar panel around and I know where east is going to be and where the sun's going to come up. 
Getting the tent up is actually fairly easy, but I've got two totes in my way. So it's a, a little bit of a stretch even for me right now. Uh, if I was shorter, I would probably take the two totes out and be able to step right into the, the tent trailer and make my life a little bit easier. Well, I don't know if that's gonna catch everything or not. Anyway, uh, okay, going from travel position to uh, unpacking position. And uh, electric blanket, one sleeping bag, a pillow, another pillow, uh, liner if I need it, grill, small mat, two burner stove, awning poles, Tarp poles. Looks like the weather's going to be fine. I'm probably not going to need the tarp. Ah. Now, 30 watt pure sine wave generator or uh, inverter. Have not used that much. Pantry. Electronics. Oh, pots and pans at the very back for ballast. a room, skirt and pegs. All right, so I would put that outer room on or sorry, the, the skirt on, even if I wasn't putting up the, uh, even if I was not putting up the awning. Because I'll store the totes underneath that normally. Okay, and of course this line right here just helps keep the whole thing uh, tight. Straightens the roof out a little bit. Some people may say I compartmentalize a little bit too much with all the totes. And these tubes, sewer pipe, for the, uh, for the poles. But it keeps uh, everything else clean, keeps them all together, and it really doesn't take up much room, extra room. So I very quickly take the poles and I'll, uh, I'll measure them to the uh, appropriate place on the tent which gives me a good starting point. Makes my life a little bit easier. Then it's a matter of making sure I get all the the guy lines out. One for each pole. And then I'll drop the the pegs in place as well. There's always at least one tangled guy line. But no, since I won't be putting the tarp up tonight, we'll just throw that tube of, of four more poles underneath, just like the, uh, the awning one.
I'll use this same style of peg to hold down the the bottom of the outer room and also the bottom of the skirt. Now a lot of people just take and leave their awning on all the time. You just flip it over. Now I'm I'm tall. It doesn't take me very much effort to actually zip it in place. And uh, I've just gotten in the habit of taking it on, taking it off and on, uh, rather than leaving it attached. I don't know. That's just me. I think I've mentioned it before that my awning takes four poles. The newer ones only take three. Now one of the Minimate owners on the Facebook Minimate owners group was talking about the, um, the, the bit of the sag in the awning. So that prompted me to try something. This is for uh, Marky. So that helps a little bit and what I've done is I took an old maglite belt pouch, gorilla glued it to the awning and cut the right size uh, set of old tent pegs or tent poles, put a eye at one end and that just, well, this helps stiffen that up a little bit. I don't know if I'd always use it, but uh, seems to do the trick. Now, mind you, when I get the weight of the the adder room on it, it might that might change up. Okay, I promised uh, my girlfriend I'd stay hydrated. Big Falls Pale Ale. Uh, just for the record, it's a Richard Squires Memorial. Uh, Provincial Park is at Big Falls, and we're going to take a look at Big Falls tomorrow. Crooked Feeder is on the road leading out to the falls. Oh. So, little uh, hydration break. Consider this as intermission time. I don't want to make each segment too long. We'll continue with the outer room and uh, finishing setup and having supper in the next video. Thank you for coming along for this much and we'll see you shortly with a new video.